We have a bit of a cat problem, or I should say we had a bit of a cat problem. Basically, the problem was that cats were coming into our garden and using it as a litter box. Also, we were lucky to get birds nest on the side of our house in the bird box that we put up. It has a little camera in it, so we could actually watch them build the nest and hatch the chicks, and then we could watch the chicks veg. It was fantastic, but the cats are fairly predatory, and they tried to hunt the birds that are in our garden. We've seen cats like jump into the trees and try and catch the birds and stuff like that. I rigged up Frigate so that it would detect when a cat is in the garden based on the, the camera's input. And it seems to work pretty well at announcing there's a cat in the garden. Every now and again, there's a false positive, but it, it kind of works. There's no intention to harm the cats at all. My dog is is much like me. They say that dogs resemble their owners quite a lot. Um, so he's uh, he's fat and old. So there's no chance in him actually catching the cats and doing anything to them. If he caught up with a cat, he wouldn't even really know what to do. But we're not always there to let the dog out. And like, they they kind of learn as soon as you open the door, then they're off, they're out of there. And if they don't hear the door open, there's no danger for them. So so they don't they don't worry too much, and they they carried on going. So that didn't really solve the problem. The next attempt at solving this problem was to get one of these. You can kind of buy them off Amazon. You plug a hose in and it has a motion sensor built into it. And when it detects motion, it sets off a little spray of water. And it turns on for like a few seconds. It works pretty well. I think if there's an area of garden that you want to protect and you don't want cats going in. So maybe you've got like a flower bed or something like that. And people aren't going to be walking over it. Then th this solution might work pretty well. But the problem with these is... They don't differentiate between a person or a cat or a hedgehog or anything else that might trip the motion sensor. So as soon as something goes in front of it, it's going to set off the sprinkler. The cats are pretty smart as well. They figure this out quite quickly that if they walk in front, uh, they're going to get wet. If they walk behind or if they go to the toilet behind it, they're, they're in no danger of getting sprayed with the water. So this led me on to the third solution. And this is the one that I'm really happy with. We we got another sprinkler. It's still connected to the hose, but it's one of these sprinklers that when you put pressure on it, it drives a mechanism and it kind of clicks around. So you'll have you've seen them before. They go and fire out little jets of water, um, but they'll actually do a whole 360 degree rotation. And then when, get, when they get to the end of that 360 degree rotation, they go back around the other way as well. So Sonoff make a Zigbee solenoid valve that you can connect directly into a hose. And what this will let me do is basically turn the hose on and off. So it's permanently rigged up. And as soon as it turns on, the sprinkler starts going off. And when it's turned off, obviously the sprinkler stops. What this gives us is complete unpredictability of which direction it's going to fire water out from, which works really well for the cats because they can't learn how it behaves. Because there's so many cats, they tend to timeshare. So one cat will come in the garden and leave and then a different cat will come in and then yet yeah, another different cat will come in and then yet yeah, another different cat will come in. And because it gets set off, there's no consistency when each cat comes into the garden with them knowing that, hey, it fired in this direction. Now when I come in, it's going to be right next to that. And then the next time it's going to be right next to that. No, it's completely random. So it seems like to the cat, it seems like it just fires off in all random directions, which means as soon as they hear it, they scarper. Because it picks up the cats pretty quickly and kicks in, the cats are now super anxious coming into the garden. And they really tipped her around. They don't kind of strut around like they're in the place anymore. So the automation's definitely working really well. For any seasoned home automation dev, you realize there's always these weird edge cases. So there was one edge case that I hit, which was a guy came to deliver a package I'd already tuned the automation at that time to know that there's a person in frame and to not set the sprinkler off. But of course, the sprinkler goes off for three seconds and then if someone comes into the garden or it's triggered before the person comes into the garden, then it means that within that three second window, it's just gonna go and it's gonna get them wet if they happen to be in the driveway at that time. So I'll go into details of exactly what the automation's done. I've actually created a flowchart to simplify how the automation hangs together. And I'll go through how the YAML works as well. 
So this is right at the start of the flow. It has a few conditions. So if a person's detected or the front doors open or the garage doors open, it basically sets this variable to say, hey, there's a human and we're gonna start a timer for 30 seconds. So now if there's a cat event that's triggered, if there is a human, it will basically do nothing. So it says if human's true, do nothing. And then it goes back to the stop. And basically what it will do is start a, uh, a 30 second timer again. So it goes into this flow. Um, however, if a cat event is triggered and there isn't a human, it will start the watering for three seconds. Just turn on that solenoid valve for three seconds. And then during this process, the water's running and we have this kill switch. So as soon as a person's detected, all the front doors opened, all the garages opened, it's going to immediately stop the water, set the flag to say there is a human, start that 30 second timer, and then we're basically back to the beginning of the flow again. And this this seems to work really well. So this is this is basically the kill switch to stop the water. That means that delivery people aren't going to get watered if the uh, if the sprinkler goes off. The other part of the flow is is basically um, if if there's nobody detected, it runs its course. It it will work for three seconds, stop the water, and then sit in this this little condition waiting for something to happen and decide whether it needs to set this variable or not. These are the three automations that basically make it work. There's the first one, which is the main one, which is to water the cats. So it's basically gonna check if there's some uh, cat in the front garden or if there's a cat that's detected by the doorbell. And it's gonna check if this condition is equal to true. What the template will basically do is it's going to look at the state of uh, last triggered. So it's gonna gr grab the attribute here and it's gonna see if it's either none, um, which means that the automation's never been executed, or it's gonna check that if we get the current time, which is now, which is this one, and it's gonna read the state again, see when it was last triggered, and it's gonna grab the total seconds here, this one. So it's gonna check, is it greater than 1800 seconds, which is 30 minutes? It's then gonna go and double check, like we saw in the flow diagram, that there's no person, and it's gonna check the door is closed, the front door's closed, and I've actually added this in as well. Um, the, ta the cats don't tend to come out if it's raining, so one of the things I've added is if the precip precipitation probability is above 85, then there's a good chance it's probably raining, and the cats aren't gonna be about anyway. So if it detects something more often than not, it's gonna be a false positive so I just don't trigger the automation there. It's then gonna go and turn on the hose, which is the Sonoff Zigbee solenoid valve that I have, and then it's gonna send me a not notification just to say that the sprinkler is set off and we water the cat. We then have this automation, which is the one that's gonna stop watering the cats. And what this automation is gonna do is, it's literally just gonna trigger when the Sonoff Zigbee solenoid valve is turned on it's gonna wait for three seconds and then it's just gonna turn it off again. That means no matter how it's triggered, um, it will always, always turn itself back off after three seconds. Uh, there was one instance where it basically got set off for some reason or it turned on for some reason. Um, it wasn't exactly clear. I looked at the traces and I couldn't see why it had turned on, um, but it does mean that if that happens, then it won't stay on for longer than three seconds. So we're not gonna waste a whole load of water. And then there's this other automation, which is basically the kill switch. So this one is to not water people. So if the automation is already running, so the Sonoff valve is turned on, um, it's basically gonna trigger on all of these events. So if there's a person at the door, if there is a person uh, in the front garden camera, if the visitor uh, status is turned on in the doorbell. So this actually means someone's uh, pressed the button. So say if for some reason it doesn't recognize that they're a person, but they press the doorbell, it's gonna start that 30 second timer. It's also gonna be triggered by the front door being opened and it's gonna be triggered by the garage being opened as well. 
the action on this automation is is super simple what you would expect so it's just gonna do the kill switch it's just gonna turn off turn off the hose it's gonna as you saw in the flow diagram set the boolean it's gonna wait for 30 seconds and then it's going to disable that boolean again this is what the input boolean looks like so it's just front garden recent person and it's literally just this input boolean that i've set up so this is the input boolean and i can just control that directly from the automations so the automation is pretty rock solid now we do still have a bit of a problem with false positives so there's a, a few instances like if it rains uh frigate might think it detects a cat if like a drip of water runs down the front of the camera these um cameras also have infrared lights so at night they can see and the problem with that is even though we can't see the infrared light insects can and because insects are attracted to the light at night that means that the spiders are attracted to the insects and then the spiders tend to build webs around the cameras and because the spiders build webs around the cameras when there's a gust of wind and it catches the light in a particular way you can get false positives then with it thinking that it's a cat another fairly concrete example of false positives was it was just halloween and we put up a bunch of decorations and some of the ghosts that we had on the hedge when the wind would catch them in a particular way again frigate would think that that was a cat and it would be flagged up having the automation only trigger every 30 minutes is actually not a bad thing because again it makes it super unpredictable for the cats and the goal is to keep the cats out of the garden not necessarily to keep get the cats wet so it actually works really well and the proof is in the pudding like we've not had the cats using our garden as a litter tray we've noticed all of the birds coming back into the garden we've seen them on the feeders a lot more so really awesome automation i really like that it works as well as it well as it works so even though the automation works really well there's still some changes that i want to make i currently use the free version of frigate and i'm going to upgrade to the paid version of frigate um, as i do this i'm going to keep a track of what i get and how well the automation works with the free version of frigate and what i get and how well the automation works with the paid version of frigate if you're interested in a dive into that i'm probably going to make a video about it so make sure you subscribe so you can stay up to date with that and what i'm hoping is that with the paid version of frigate i can train the specific model so that it detects cats in my garden because one of the things that frigate does is it uses a base model that's basically trained on all cats what i can do is tweak the model so it's trained on pictures of cats from my specific cameras so i can weed out the false positives a lot better it also provides some other models like YOLO V9, which is just better for detection as well. So I'm really keen to uh, to give that a try and I will report back how well Frigate Plus works for this particular setup. If you enjoyed the video, please do leave a thumbs up. It makes a massive difference to the channel. I uh, appreciate your time and I'll catch you in the next one.